The key to a good lap time was in Senna's era a technical balancing act. The rewards for getting it right were in racing terms substantial. Lowering the car one millimetre, which is less than a sixteenth of an inch, would make the car go several tenths of a second quicker. At some circuits, maybe as much as half a second quicker a lap. So all competitive teams would be running their car absolutely on the limit of as, as low as they possibly could. If anything unexpected should happen to reduce the ride height to below the critical setting, trouble would be in store for the driver. At exactly 11.0 seconds into Senna's seventh lap, something had reduced the ride height of the Williams. Television viewers saw an explosion of sparks, indicating that the car was indeed touching the ground in the middle of one of the fastest corners in the whole of Formula One. What was it that was causing Senna's car to scrape along the ground that day in 1994? In the case of Senna's accident, there was a, a bad incident at the start. So it was decided to start the race behind the safety car. Now the safety car is just a road car driven at reasonable speed, but way below anything that a racing car would ever do. The race at Imola was only the second time a safety car had been used on a dry track in Formula One, and it played havoc with the cars crawling round behind it. The tyres cooled down from their normal hot racing temperatures, causing them to contract, and it was this that caused the drop in the oh-so-critical ride height. It would normally be just skating, just, just, just touching the ground in those places, on those bumps. Well, of course, with the tyre pressures down by maybe 25%, the movement in the tyre was maybe up by four or five millimetres. And when the skid, which is metallic, hits the ground, rather than having a huge grip that sticky racing rubber has, and is being pointed in the correct direction by the driver, you have just, it's just like um, a ski. So, not only had a large amount of downforce been removed from the car by denying the airflow underneath it, the car was also resting for this split second only on the metal skids beneath it. The car was suddenly unable to generate the grip it needed to get round the corner. At 11.2 seconds, the back of the car stepped out. With lightning reactions, Ayrton Senna steered into the slide a tenth of a second later. The front of the car gripped and turned it to the right. The data logger recorded that the brakes were fully on. The car was now slowing down as hard as possible, but Ayrton Senna ran out of road.
el cariño que se le pueda tener a las carreras. Decían, por ejemplo... When all said and done, the really tragic thing about Ayrton's crash was that if it wasn't for one little thing, he would have been able to jump out of the car and walk back to his spare for the restart. And that little thing was that when his car hit the wall, the front wheel was trapped between the wall and the chassis as the suspension collapsed. And as the car skidded along the wall, the wheel trapped between the two just popped up at the wrong moment and hit him in the head. If it wasn't for that, he would have been uninjured. Senna died just over four hours later in hospital. On his return to his native Brazil, he was given a burial in keeping with his status as a national hero. Fans flocked to pay their respects, and his country declared three days of official mourning. The lessons learned from his accident changed the sport forever, and without a doubt has saved many a life since. It is perhaps a fitting legacy to a great man.